well guys, it looks like it's going to be a better day today. Yesterday was well too windy. The wind is going to pick up a little bit later on, but uh, yeah, I had a look at a little bit of the footage and it was far too windy. Um, nice brim yesterday though. Okay yeah, guys, wind's died off. Just fishing this edge. Just cast it into the weed with a uh, soft plastic and hooked an alright fish. I don't know what it is. doesn't feel like a floody. Uh, what is he? Oh, he's a good... Uh, under the boat. I think he might be a trevally. He's a good brim. Good brim bow. He's a cracking brim. Just let you have a look at him. Just swapped over to a slim swim soft plastic. Thought he was a trevally so that's all right. And he's an absolute cracker of a brim. Beautiful. So today uh, not really much of a plan. I've got the day off so just gonna float around here and see what we can catch. Let's get out there. Look at him. Yeah, he'd be legal. Easily legal. He's a cracking brim. It's just on that slim swim there. See him on slim swim back in. There you go, mate. That's where you come from. Yeah, just where I'm launching here, there's a stack of brim just around here. I'm going to see if, uh, without freaking them out, see if I can get them. There's a couple of good sized ones amongst them. Big shell of brim. I'm doing at the moment guys is just uh, I've got one rod out uh, with a lively lure on it a pink lively lure if you can see here we've got a, a sandbank here okay and what I want to do is go around in the back of that sandbank because I've got a feeling there will be fish sat behind that sandbank just waiting for a feed the tide's starting to slowly run in there and it's being run out so I reckon that the, there'll be fish sat in behind it um, because they've already been the tide's already been running this way out so it's been running running out um, running over these flats and now it's turned the tide so I'm thinking that they'll still be sat in that in the deeper water there in amongst all this weed a lot of weed just over here and um, you don't have to um, swim these lures very quickly just nice and easy Leslie pace So I got my first fish of the day, guys. There's a uh, nice floody, good legal flooded. Uh, gotta be really careful because I've only got light leader, so I've just gotta tire him out. As soon as I touch him with this, it's gonna be a nightmare. I wonder if I can get him with my glove. And he'll be getting nice and strong now, he's in that current, so. So as soon as I put him in this small net, he's, uh, he's gonna go mental. Just loosen that drag off a little bit, keep that tension on him. If you end up with trebles in hand, it's not good. It spoils your day. And like I say, I've only got six pound leader on here, so I'm just going to slowly bring him across. This is where we could lose him. I'll try the net first up. Oh, shit. Say about the net. See this, guys. I'm just trying to get him. There you go. Beautiful. Woo! Now that's a nice flathead. I'll just try and get myself out the wind with my back to the wind. There you go. Look at that guy. That's a beautiful flathead. Absolutely stonker. What would he be? I'm just going to grab my ruler. All right. So that's a 30 centimeter ruler. So he'd be oh. got me with the gill rakers. Yeah, he wanted that lure good and proper, didn't he? If he shakes his head again. I'm going to cop these in the head in my hands. So, as usual, I've come unprepared. All right. 
see if we can go and paddle across the way to the uh, to the beach. I got blood all over my boat, and it's not the flooded blood. <laughs> it happens. Well, guys, I'm going to put this flathead back. I've just realised, measured it, and it's a little bit bigger than what I thought it was. So she's going back because she's uh, she's a good fish. Yeah, she's. Uh, I thought she's about 48, but then I've got her back to the bank and measured her. She's a lot bigger than 48. She's biting down on my thumb at the moment. Come on. Come on, big girl. There she goes. There she goes. So guys, there we go. We've just put the big girl back. I thought she was only about 48 centimetres, but when I got her up on the bank here, she was, she went 60 centimetres. That was uh, double the size of the ruler. I was probably getting a little bit excited. She had a big shovel head, a shovel head on her. So I put her back in the water and she swam off beautifully. So there's no problem there. And I'm hoping that uh, we can get a few more fish today. I've got blood on the old tonics and it's not the flathead blood. <laughs> if it's not a barramundi, it's the flathead putting the spikes into me. Anyway, you've got to be in it to win it. So uh, let's get out there and have another crack. Going to try for all sorts of stuff today. It looks like a really good day. The water's really, really nice and warm. Beautiful. The water's really, really warm. And uh, yeah, the wind was coming up there and now it's dropped off again. So we're just going to get some wind gusts today by the looks of it. And tomorrow's out of the question. It's uh, blowing about 30, 40 knots tomorrow. So um, let's get back out there and give it a crack, eh? Got a few soft plastics with me, also I've got some poppers. I might even try and head up onto the flats and see if I can get a whiting on a popper. Um, but that's just made my day already. I've only been out two minutes. Gotta give the old tonics a bit of a clean off. A little bit of blood on that. So I'm just basically working a, a sandy uh, edge you can see out there. And um, just where I got that flooded was in a weedy edge that I fished before. I caught plenty of flooded on that corner. Um, a lot smaller than that one there, so it's good to see a few big girls around the system. Uh, there's a lot of prawns in the river at the moment, so I'm hoping with the um, with the poppers I can have a crack for some bream or some uh, whiting on poppers a little bit later on. We'll see how we go. Yep. Oh, nice fish. What's this? Oh. So I'm just drifting at the moment. I don't know what he is. It's not a floody. Oh, nice brimbo. Nice brim. Beautiful. Come on, big fella. In you go. Doing all right, brim. Nice. Just after I've caught that big flooded, this is starting to turn out to be a good session this morning. Beautiful. Let's have a look at this guy. Yeah, it's a grunter. You hear him grunting? They call them grunters, or uh, they're actually really good to eat, and they're eating one of these. Someone was telling me, I think Scotty was telling me that. He's really hooked in. There you go. No, it's not a brim. ID him, that's a uh, they call him a grunter. I meant to be absolutely beautiful to eat. This guy's gonna go back, but um, well, that was fun just on that um, slim swim Z man. And I got him uh, just on the top of the water as the, as the slim swim was coming towards the boat. Now we'll get him back in the water. There you go, buddy. Uh, just a matter of uh, paddling up to this edge here. Yeah. Got the wind in my face at the moment, so I'm just going to use the wind. The tide's still running in, so it's a nice slow drift with the wind. And the tide's pushing against me a little bit. And uh, yeah, just flick your soft plastics in front of your kayak. So I'll just spin around now and I'll just demonstrate it. So I've got the wind behind me. Spin around. And then we've got all like little weed 
weed uh, clumps all the way through here, and that's where the floodies like to be, and any other fish. And then just straight out, cast it straight out, drop it down, and it has to be on the bottom. So it's on the bottom at the moment, and then just a little flick of the rod. Now you can do a slow roll as well. Like I sometimes like to slow roll it, like lift the rod up fairly high over the top of the weed and do a slow roll and that's how you will get the brim sometimes. Or just if you're after the floodhead, the floodhead will take it as well because we're only fishing in two foot of water at the most, maybe, maybe two or three foot of water. And it's quite cool when they hit it. It's hard to get it on camera sometimes, but they'll come up to the surface and they'll smack the surface for it. And uh, it's, it's great fun. Yeah, just cast in front of you, in front of your kayak. Drop it down, wind up the slack. And just when it's windy like this, especially if you're fishing with braid, when you uh, lift the rod up for the flick like that, make sure you slowly let the, the plastic go back down. Otherwise you'll end up with wind knots and just wind down and then just a little touch again. And that's it really, basically. And uh, yeah, just make sure you're always in contact with that lure. So you can feel the bites. Here we go, fish on. There's just a, again, just drifting across this little flat here. I've pulled out of the wind. Uh, I've never fished this spot before, and it's been quite productive. That again was on uh, the soft plastic. He's a bit too small to keep as a keeper. He wouldn't even be uh, 25 centimeters. There you go. Are these the ones that do all the damage on your feet and everything, especially when you're in the kayak. It's always challenging when you're in the kayak. At least I'm out of that wind and you can hear, hear me for a change. What can you do? You can't do much about the weather. Put him back, eh? There ought to be a big one like that last one we got. There we go, end of another one. Just over the top of all these clumps of weed. Don't know what it is, oh, another floody. He's coming in easy. Small flooded, a lot of small ones. Uh, healthy, healthy little system. About the same size as that last one we got. We had one that's too big, the other ones are a bit too small. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Catch one, don't catch one. I'm having a fantastic day off. Nice little session on the floodies and the brim and the uh, grunters. It's been pretty good. All right. So, this is the sort of territory that you're looking for when you're on the kayak. All nice weed edges like this. You do get caught up in it now and again. That's why I've stopped trawling and starting to use the soft plastics now because I'm in a little bit of shallower ground. Um, see that I would say. I don't need to put the uh, GoPro underwater. Um, it's pretty shallow here. So yeah, just drifting straight back over the top of this and giving a little bit of a flick flick over the top. And um, yeah, the flooded just sitting probably on the side of these, uh, on these mounds of weed. And what you want to do is just cast in between them. Like this is a perfect little spot here. Just cast in between there and they'll come out and smash it. Now, another thing you can see, some bloke's got his uh, crab pots out here. He's probably put them out this morning. Um, always look for some crab pots. It's a perfect scenario for floodhead. They absolutely love coming in behind the crab pots. Obviously don't cast on top of the crab pots, but um, you will find that it'll, the, uh, the crabs smashing up whatever they put in there, the fish frames and that, will actually help um, you know, bring some floodhead in, so, and, and amongst other fish as well. So I've been fishing in between these, uh, in between these pots. And um, yeah, it's just a natural burley, obviously, that brings them up and uh, always helps. So just be careful you obviously don't hook up on the crab pot. Um, but yeah, always in and around them, um, you'll find that you'll find fish. Cool, there's another fish. Nearly every cast at the moment. These small ones are coming in. Nearly every cast. Stacks of them around here. All in the same area around them crab pots. These are all babies, little babies. Still, bit of fun. 
Uh, just the tide's just coming up now, so it's the last of the run up. Um, so I'm thinking that the fish are coming up onto these little weed beds here, just uh, waiting for that tide to turn. Uh, that tide will turn around about 12 today. I'm not too sure what time is it at the moment. Howdy, guys. This one's not quite legal either. Hi. That's good. The plastic's falling out. I hope you enjoyed that clip. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again next Friday at Hook and the Cook. Hopefully this one will be out before Christmas. I uh, wish you all Merry Christmas. And I'd like to thank all our sponsors and all our friends and everybody out there watching the clips. And we'll see you in 2020. Cheers, guys. We'd like to give a big thank you to all our sponsors for 2019.